As we journey through life, we all encounter ebbs and flows, many highs and lows. We often come across stumbling blocks that leave us feeling quite disheartened or unsure about how to move back to the realm of possibility and positivity. No matter what we undergo, we all can embrace the journey, tap into the tools to push through and overcome, and find the beauty in the ashes. This is Odyssey with Yendi, Beauty in the Ashes. Roshane, 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 or should I say Roshkam? Roshane. Because if we're on the ground, it's Roshane. Well, yeah. we're keeping yeah. it level, level today. So hmm. this is not like a personality or a this or a, this is Roshane and, and Yendi. Yendi. Not yeah, sure. yeah. Why do we always do that? We always do Synchronize. that. Synchronize. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel like there is so much about you and to you that we see and we know because you're so open, so vulnerable in your YouTube space. Yes. Um, but I also feel like there is a lot that we could still dive further into yes. with your journey. Multi-layered. Very multi-layered. Mm. I mean, let me just peel this onion back. <sighs> Well, you know, smell like onion. Oh. It smell good. Actually, you do. <laughs> Thank you. No, we um, always hold oh. hands. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> um, let's talk a bit about your journey as a lawyer come YouTuber. Because somehow, when you do that math, it not really maths. Yeah. It's, it's a story that every time I tell the story, people are just like, you're kidding, you're joking. No, that can't be true. I was really enjoying my job. Like, I really loved life. Mm. Um, I was being paid well, I had good clients, my boss was good. Everything was perfectly fine in my view. But there was just an inkling, like there was just something in my spirit that was telling me that this was not what I was supposed to be doing. And it's a faith story. It is really not one of those stories that you can explain with words to say, okay, this, like on paper, this is what was happening. No, it was all a gut feeling mm. um, and a conversation with God over and over and over again. And, and as a child of God and as somebody who is faith-based, you know that when God talked to you the first time, mm. you know, for the times you're like... <laughs> <laughs> and then he'll speak a second. Right. And he spoke at, at least 10 times. And then he shouts eventually. Yes. He? Yeah. And he shouted from the skies and the heavens. And then I heard for sure with confirmation through the story of Elijah and mm. it being told, the same story being told over the course of a weekend, mm. the Friday, the Saturday, the Sunday, the Monday, mm. different voices, different people. And I was like, yeah, I'm absolutely sure. Yeah. And so that is when I decided, I was like, you know what? Let's, let's take a leap. Not, we not know, we don't know where we're going. But here is my thing. We need to rewind a bit because here it is, you've, you've decided you're going to take this leap but only maybe a couple of years before that, you were studying law. You're in Barbados and you're just like, why am I even doing this thing called life? Yeah, called life. Yeah. Not called law, called life. Yeah. Um, I, I think up to the point of university, like we, I had... I had relationships, I had friendships, all of that. And I thought that they were healthy and fun and this and that. And when I got to Barbados, that is when, that's the first time that I've really had to sit with myself and sit with the circumstances of life. No church family, no mom, no grandfather, no, like nobody as a sort of buffer or cushion. Yes. And I realized that my emotional bandwidth was very small mm -hmm. like i was not absorbing like i wasn't handling emotional things the way that i thought i should have handled right. them Yendi, at that point i did not think that i had suicidal thoughts what did you think it was i'm just sad out right i'm sad out I'm sad mm -hmm. sadness and sadness and sadness sad sad right. <laughs> we're just sad yeah and i realized that 
at the, in the nights at like 12 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning, I'd just be walking in the middle of the road. I'd just, I'd be like, okay, I'm going for a walk. I'm walking in the middle of the road and I'm just like, Father God, please just make a car come let me down. Please. Please. I'm not going to harm myself, but, you didn't want but to be I here. just don't, it just, it, this is not it. And I was doing it consistently yeah. for weeks, really? right? Yeah. A lot of people don't know that. One night I was missing. So my mood partner at the time, she's from Trinidad, yeah. Kavita. I'll tell her to watch this. <laughs> um, Kavita was calling me to work on a submission, right? And she's just like, I'm not getting him. I'm not getting him. And my coach, he called her because they were just like, why are we not hearing from him? Yeah. This is at like 11 p.m. in Barbados, right. right? And I remember walking on, was it West Avenue? I'm walking and I just see a black RAV4 coming down the road. And the two of them, they're just like, Roshin, what are you doing out here? Get in the car. I was like, what do you mean what may I do out here? I walk, but they're like, you're in the middle of the road, sir. Like, come on now. This is not okay. Yeah. And I was like, it was at that moment that I said to myself, I was like, no, something not right. Because I could not have been at such a low, low where for me the alternative would be to not be to here. Not be here. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know that though. And at that time, I thought that I just didn't have mental fortitude. Right. But then what is mental fortitude? I think that part of mental fortitude is knowing when you need help. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Part of it is saying, I have I identified and I have acknowledged that there's a problem here that needs to be fixed. Right. Right? Because the difference between you and somebody who is no longer here, you know, could be just the decision to ask for help. It could be. Yeah. Did you ask for help? Yes. I did, but I did not take the route that I've, I've taken now. So I took a more informal route. I was, I was going to, I was just spending more time with friends, just identifying, okay, guys, this is a problem. Um, read this book, you know, watch right. this sermon, you know, kind of build up back yourself from scratch. Right. Um, but then when you take the informal route, then did you feel like you had a lot of roller coaster moments because yeah. you were relying on self? Yeah, and not only that, I it was a lot of trial and error. Right. So when you're doing something, when you're self-diagnosing and you're self, you're you're doing it yourself, it's like, all right, you know what, I'm going to try and watch this. Mm, it don't work, whatever, whatever. But so so if you're really at that edge. If you don't have the patience, the energy the, to fight for yourself and give yourself a chance and come and try and come and try, then you might give up. Mm. So that is one of the things that I look back and I'm just like, you know, I should have probably gotten help at that time, right. formally. What do you think about the people who think that people who go there are weak and they have given up and they're just, uh, you know, they're selfish or they're... Like, what is the thought process that is happening Going when someone... Going there meaning suicide. Yeah. Because there are a lot of people who... I mean, even as recently as a few months ago, I was having a conversation with someone and they maintained the position that uh, that's just selfish. People who do that, they're selfish and they're weak. And, uh, and I'm just like, or they're battling something that you probably can't understand because you you've not had that battle. Yeah, and I think, I think people who who say that people who do those things are selfish, it's because they probably don't want to unpack all that comes with a suicide. Right. Suicide comes with a lot of different layers, you know. Right. It comes with my personal battles. It comes with my personal interactions or relationship. Yeah. It comes with all of those things. And so if I say that you are selfish, it means that I've taken myself out of the situation. Yes. The things that I said to you, oh, you, we could have fixed them. Right. We could have done this. We could have done that. So, so you deciding to do that is selfish because you know you could have asked me. No, it's much more layered than that. But that approach absolves everybody else. Of playing any part any or any part, role. Any part, any role, right? So 
what I always ask, you know, like I, I was talking mm. to my grandfather about it and I said to him, I said, I said, do you think that the one thing that would keep us going, life, do you think that someone would consciously choose to take that from themselves? Mm. Like, it's the only thing that makes me me, you know, right. the fact that I have breath. Because right. when I'm dead, I'm done. Do you think that somebody would do this because, oh, I can't bother? Oh, it's, oh, it's just, it's not, a, it's not a fickle thing to impose harm on yourself because you want, fi like, final, you want finality, you want it to be over. It, it cannot be a selfish act. It is actually an indication that somebody has no, like, turning point. There's no turning back. And they, they, they don't feel like they can call anybody. They don't feel like they can cry to anybody. They feel like they're alone in this world and they feel alone to the point where they might as well just not be here. Not be here. Where, where do you think your courage came from to say, I have to choose something else for myself because the informal approach isn't working. You took another step. You got professional support. <laughs> I said I would tell you this when we turned on the camera because I wanted to hear it for the first time. The reason I got, oh, the reason I went to therapy the first time was because I wanted to convince somebody that I love very much that I was willing to do whatever it took to work on myself. Mm, so it wasn't even for you? It wasn't for me. It was like, mm. um, I watch Oprah I watch yeah. <laughs> Super Soul. I watch all of these things. But you know what? I'm going to show you how committed I am to, to growth. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go to therapy. So actually, the first time I, I did therapy was a manipulative move. Right. On your part. On my part. Yeah. Because I wanted to show or save indicate, face. save face that, mm -hmm. oh, I'm working on myself. But when I went, I remember I called every single friend I had. And I said, this is the best money I ever spent in my life. <laughs> I want, look here, it's the best money I've spent. Like I would literally give away my phone. I would give away my laptop. If like, if that money, well, if I needed, needed that. To to oh yes, mm -hmm. it's the best money that I've spent. And I saw a difference. Hmm. You can even, you can go on my YouTube channel and you can actually see where there was a shift. Right. Somebody, somebody here is different. Right? And and the thing that people the issue that people have with therapy, you know, Yandy, is that they feel like like they they diagnose the therapy session mm -hmm. and say what is gonna happen before it even happens. That's right. And then they're just like, Oh, but I don't need to it never goes how you plan. Like we plan like I come and I say, Well, no, Yandy said something that hurt me. So we're gonna talk about what Yandy said that hurt me. And within the first two minutes, I'm like, you know, Yandy said something that hurt me. Yes, but what about when you were in grade five and you had lunch in the canteen? And you're just I'm like, like huh? <laughs> what? And by the time you're done, you know, you realize that the real issue is not the even source. with what Yandy said, no. you know. Yandy remind you of a girl I who you. said That's so right. That right. was a trigger, but what is a right. source? And most mm -hmm. of us are not equipped to get to the source, right? right? right. A therapist asks all the right questions. Yeah. They never tell you what to do, you know? Yeah. They're asking you the questions. And if you're honest with yourself, you it get unpacks. through. It unpacks. It unpacks. Do you feel, is the work ever done when you've, if you've got to a place where you've, I mean, you've got to that place of being at rock bottom. Do you feel like the work is ever done or are you constantly having to work on it because every now and then something tries to raise its head and you're like, no, no, no. Let me put these actions in place. Let me put these new practices in place. The work is never done because I'm still alive. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's... Our word, you know, me love, <laughs> yeah, no, you know. I was, like, I was like, if I come on this and you don't say a word, you see? You know, so you never drop no knowledge. No knowledge. <laughs> no, but seriously, the, the work is never done because I like, once I have life, because it's the weirdest things that trigger you, you know? Yes. You know? Yes. Like, and you have to be constantly looking to improve yourself and to, and to develop. Because otherwise, 
you're going to be stagnant. That is one. But two, as I said, you don't know what is going to be coming up. Mm -hmm. If life is moving and life is fluid and, and life is going, how do you navigate life without doing that constant work? Because the ebbs and flows are going to happen. Yes. So right? it's funny. I always, um, I always say, because you have people who are perfectionists. Yes. And I always say it's one of the worst things to seek perfection because you cannot account or predict for what will come. Yeah. So even if, let's say, we are in a relationship, we might have the perfect dynamic now, but then you might lose a loved one or a parent, and then I don't, I'm now meeting for the first time encountering loss. Or let's say yes. I have been fired. You are yes. now encountering yes. me at the first, for the first time yes. in that space. So I always, there are so yes. many moving parts with life, right? Absolutely. That you're right. You yeah. just, you take it as it comes each yes. day. Yeah. And I'm, we're navigating yeah. so many different things. Yendi, you have gone through so many different phases in your yeah. life, right? Yeah. So your Miss Jamaica world phase your Miss Jamie, universe, <laughs> your, no, like your, your different phases, having motherhood, a child, motherhood, yes. loss, yes. doing, doing season one of a show versus season two. Yes. It's so many different phases. And so if you are constantly evolving, mm -hmm. then your mindset is evolving. Right. The way that you look at life is evolving. There are things that I would have accepted last year and did that time. Absolutely not accepting now. But we have to talk about that. The importance of setting the boundaries for even your mental health. Yes. How important is it yes. to honor your choices, honor your needs versus the people pleasing? Because that eventually will put you back in a rabbit hole, right? I had a conversation with a friend a few days ago. She made a decision. The decision that she made is her decision. Mm. But I know that... It has implications for me okay. because it would undo a lot of the work that I was doing for myself. So I had to set a boundary with her because I knew that I had done too much work to revert, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. the, the thing about work, you know, is that, yeah, it's ongoing and whatever. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a never-ending process. Da, 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 da. What's worse than that is when you know that these are the things that you're supposed to be doing to keep the work going and you actually betray yourself and set up yourself and you just step right back. So you know that if you go, if you go up to Marcus' house, you know that there is something there that is going to trigger you. By the way, Marcos don't call me. Marcos doesn't exist. Who named Marcos? I don't know. Okay, okay. Me and Gia, example. Me don't even have a Marcos in my life. Um, <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> stop that. Uh, yeah. When you go up there now, having done nine months of work... That's right. You go up there. What do you expect them? That's right. What do you expect to really happen? Because you also, you probably are not solid in that new space no, and new growth and no. grounding and you put yourself in a place of vulnerability right, right. Mm -hmm. and we're not trusting ourselves half of the times we know yeah. you know our yeah. voices tell us and you're just like well i'm gonna go against my better judgment well it's back to what you said in the beginning right that gut feeling the yes. voice of god guiding yeah. you yeah and i and i think i've said this several times but i know that i'm in a different place than i was before because self-betrayal is no longer my Mm -hmm. Yeah. What does self betrayal look like for people who are like, what is he saying? Self betrayal looks like what? Spell it out. Sell out yourself. Mm -hmm. You go against yourself. Mm -hmm. There are things that are for you and beneficial to you that you are not doing. And there are things that are detrimental to you and you know the effect of it and, and you, you have are. chosen. Mm -hmm. And the things don't mean drugs and alcohol all the time. Mm -hmm. It could be people, right? Mm -hmm. Self-betrayal is saying yes to somewhere that you do not want to go. You don't want to go. Where are you going? Mm -hmm. Self-betrayal is setting yourself on fire to keep somebody warm. That is self-betrayal. A whole yeah. entire word. No. And, and I know... I know that my outlook on life is different because mm. I am no longer willing to betray myself 
for someone else. It could have been my mother, cousin, auntie, best friend. What am I doing? Why am I to make you happy or to make you even comfortable? Why must I be uncomfortable? Be uncomfortable? Why? But that was one of the indicators to me that what I was doing was working. Right. Because you got to that place. Because I got to that place where I knew that I, cho choosing the comfort. or And, and me, let me just be very clear. There are some people who are selfish. We're not talking about selfish and stay bad. No. We're talking about you know that something is not in your best interest. There are times when I know that something is not in my best interest now. And it would upset the entire world. And I'm not going to change my mind. Not going to change my mind. How does one hold and maintain that position? Practice. How does one practice? I started with the little things. Yeah. I started saying no to, to, to little things. Like, Yendi, you, you call me to be on the show. And in my spirit, I don't feel like I, I should be on it. I say, you know what, Andy? No, it's all right. Start with those, those the, the littlest things, yeah. invitations, mm -hmm. conversations. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're calling me and I know what you're calling me about and I know that it's going to make me uncomfortable. Am I going to answer the phone? Am I going to say, hey, I do not want to talk about this. I'm going to dodge it out. The first, the first time, you know, it might be dodge because you're not there yet right. to say no. But then eventually... The second time it might be, you know what, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. The next time it might be, I am uncomfortable when you speak to me about this. The next time it, it will be, if you speak to me about this again, I will not answer the phone. Like it's, it's, yeah. it's steps. So don't, so don't watch this and say, boy, you know, what Russia talk about things were not attainable or doable or whatever. No, 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 no. Very doable. But it's time and effort and just taking baby steps. Right? Mm. All of my friends will tell you, my family will tell you, everyone will tell you, the person that you're seeing now who is able to say, oh, this is not serving me, this is that, and just, no. <laughs> no. As a matter of fact, I had two friends who said to me, you just will not stay, like you will not hold true to your word. Because I, I know, you know, Yendi, I know I'm not supposed to do something. So I said, I'm not do that. When I can't catch me, but I can't say no. Mm. But you have to practice. Yeah. Yeah. So before you mentioned leaving the practice of law because you just knew it wasn't, it didn't sit well in your spirit. It, the decision was a completely faith-based decision, yes. as you said. Yeah. Um, let's talk a bit about the discomfort in the transition because here it is now. You've invested, you've studied, you have taiki. And I understand the weight that comes with title in families that are like the next generation need to do better, be better. Yes, okay. Yes. So you have title and now you're like, so about all those years of study, I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna not betray myself and I'm going to follow the gut. my gut and my spirit and do what I feel is a calling on my life. Yeah. How does that transition happen? Because that's uncomfortable. I know that. It is uncomfortable. It is, my mother said on several occasions, in many different forums, <laughs> Roshane has disappointed me. Roshane is a disappointment. Roshane is a disappointment. Those words have never left my spirit, mind, heart. I am disappointed. And it's, so that is one. Two, so I'm, I'm giving you all the different factors. Of course. My grandfather, at the same time, is saying, let him do what he needs to do. Mm. He's young. He'll figure it out. Mm. Oh, you know, the young people, you know, it's a new age and a new time. While this is happening, the entire class of 20, however, whatever, <laughs> is looking at me and they're just like, watch him. Mm -hmm. I think him nice, eh? mm -hmm. And the world is now, well, Jamaica, YouTube, whatever, is seeing this guy on YouTube. Wendo. Mm -hmm. what, so it was a very odd 
transition. Yes. It was like a lot of emotions, a lot of a lot of confusion. But at the back of my mind, I just knew that I was doing the right thing. Because of this. Yeah, because like it, Yendi, I'm telling you, I had several job offers because people thought I left my job because I want another job. At no, I don't want another job. I just <laughs> don't want to do this. I I could have. I could have gone that route, you know? I like I was I had so many different options. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no. Not for me. Not for me. But I was, I was confused. Confused. I and I tell people no, don't feel like I knew what I was doing. I just knew who I wanted to be. I just knew where I wanted to go. Like I closed my eyes and I saw a version of myself. Like this, this that we're doing now, I was like, yeah. That is that is who I am supposed you to be. You vision me? Say yes. Say yes. Oh, you can't say otherwise. I cannot I'm say otherwise. <laughs> no, but seriously. Yeah. Like, and I remember I said it to you when we did our video. Yeah. I said to you, I was, I was like, Yendi, I'd never imagined the day that I'd be like, oh, let's do a video with Yendi. Oh, Yendi's calling me on my phone or whatever. And that is, that is like 10% of the bigger picture. Right. Bigger picture being that a mother is going to call or going to DM me or whatever and say, oh, you know, my five-year-old son says, oh, you know, I look at this guy and I want to be like that because he's just so cool. And it, like being able to share with university students and say, guys, this is what you need to do. Look here, no matter, make the devil use your, don't farm the fool. <laughs> you're lying, that you know. <laughs> don't make the devil use your people. <laughs> no, like all of those things, I knew that that is who I was supposed to be. Yeah. So... The how, the where, the why, the when, the what, the... I, I didn't know that. And you know I still I, don't know. You know what I can't help but wonder listening to you is I can't help but wonder if there is a correlation between where you were in that space in Barbados. I am... My spirit is saying doing what you knew was not what was for you, you know? And investing and putting all of this time and effort into this thing that was not for you and the correlation between doing that and immersing yourself in that space and how it affected your mental health. Because yeah. listening to you now in a thriving space and what your mindset is almost feels like it's completely it's, it's polar night and day. opposite to... Night and day. And I can't help it if that was a contributor to your headspace because you lived and breathed and did this thing that you knew you didn't actually yeah. want to be doing. And you know... I think back to it now and I was like, now I know why every club that I was in as a public relations officer, now I know why I was putting on parties, now I know why I was on entertainment committee and doing that, because that was my happier place, mm -hmm. right? And I think back to it now and I'm like, so suppose I wasn't doing all these random things that made me happy. Yendi, may I tell you, in Barbados, I'm dancing. I used to dance in high school, you know. But I'm saying like, like I'm finding things to do to kind of keep me afloat. Yeah. Because academically, I was doing well, you know. Right. Like, yeah, that's fine. But up here, some of the most unhappy days of my life. Like, I, I think about it all the time. And I was like, boy, I was unhappy. I was doing well, you know. But I'm never happy at all. Unhappy. Unhappy. It's because I probably was doing what I... You weren't called to do. Yeah. It wasn't your purpose work. It wasn't, it wasn't your passion work. work. It right. wasn't, yeah. And my friend, she always says to me, Roshane, with you, it's not what you can do. It's what you want to do. It's not about can. Because you can do it all, can't you? We can A do, lot of us can do it all. Of us, all of us can do it if all. If we're thinking about capacity, yeah. I can go to university right now and decide that I'm going to study anything. I know that my brain is there. It's not about can. It's about what gets me going in the morning, what keeps me going at night, and what I'll wake up to do with joy in my eyes. Like that is what it is about. Yeah. This thing called life is not about um like chasing this and chasing, oh I want this, oh I want that behind my name, da 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 da. No.
it's amazing that you get to that place because, and I'm going to say this and I say it respectfully, because where you are in life and the stage you are in life, your age, your experiences, it's amazing to hear you say that now because I feel like we've been conditioned and socialized to believe that letters behind your name, degrees, achievements is the be all end all. And the, you know, to put it in perspective, and there are a lot of people would say that I have this view because I've done it. Right. True. Some would say that. So, yeah. you know, like I can see that the grass is not greener. Right. Because I've tried it and I'm like, okay, guys, that's not for me. Yeah. So that is, that's a part of it. But something my, my grandmother always used to say to me is, and this is a Bible verse for what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world, and loses his, his soul. soul. What's the point? Yeah. What's the point? Yeah. What is the thing now that makes you say, yep, this is how I know I'm doing exactly what I want to be doing. I am at peace. It is well with my soul. I am on the journey. I'm at the place in, the, in this journey that I'm supposed to be. Two things, but it's in one. I'm proud of myself. And my grandfather is proud of me. Yeah. Mm. I'm proud of myself and we are the hard, we are hard on ourselves, you know. I am hard on myself. We can't do nothing good. You know why you say we. <laughs> yeah. You know why we you say we. We are hard on ourselves. Mm -hmm. And for me to step back and look at the bigger picture and I say, you know what, Rush? Good job. Yeah. You are a good representation of yourself. You are a good representation of your family. Mm. You are a good representation of God. Like, I feel like God would look down on me now and say, good yeah, you. job. Yes. No, seriously. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. And then my grandfather yeah. is my meter. Yes. He's my gauge. He's nice, bad. Oh, God bless him. Nice, he? Yeah. Mm -hmm. he, I, he will never look at me and say, I'm not proud of you. I'm disappointed. But I know when he feels the positive. Right. So I know when he's beaming, gotcha. right? And as, as, the, as my compass for him to say, yeah, man, I'm proud of you and you're on the right track between him and God and God talking to me through him and God talking to me in the night. I say, yeah, man, I know I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. Mm. Also, wait, one last thing. I actually know that if I wasn't on the right track, I wouldn't be here. That's right. That's right. Because God redirects like no other. Like I am like God will God will shift your life That's and right. you know that. That's right. Right? This could have not worked out. Yes. So it, it, you know, it yes. could have not worked out. Yes. And there were many opportunities for it not to work out. Yes. But God gave me signs time and time again to say, you're on the right track. Keep on going. It might not be exactly oh, she over to the left I look a bit my boss <laughs> right. uh, yeah yeah mm, I really love that for you uh, but I'm here yeah and that is confirmation yeah. from the planner yes the creator of it all. yes what do you say to the person who is watching this now who literally feels like they can't do another day of this thing and they are hanging on by a thread. Having been there and passed there, what do you say to that person? Give yourself a chance. One last chance. Give yourself a chance. We're talking about life or death. You do not have a chance if you're not alive. Give yourself a chance. Give yourself a chance. If it is that you have to... <laughs> Everybody knows one person in this life one person even if you don't know them directly to say hi andy like everybody knows of at least one person who them can flag down run down call touch something and say listen i need help right this is your last chance please don't give up on yourself because you actually don't know what life can look like if you give yourself a chance just give yourself a chance. It's not easy. I always said it. It's always easier said than done. Always. It's easy for some. I got run down there saying a nine point. How much seconds? It's very easy to say that. Five, seven. Easier said than yeah. everything is easier said than done. But the done is what is important. That is what is important. You have to do the work. Yeah.
yeah. and if you really want to give yourself a fighting chance just like actually imagine i know it's hard because you're like my life is at rock bottom right now but just imagine your life at its best like think about that like i'm doing it right now so am i yeah i can imagine my life at peak but I cannot get there if I am dead. Yeah. So I'm going to give myself a chance. I'm going to seek the right help. It's, it's, the, the mental part of it is just like physical, you know. If you're sick, physically sick, and you are on your, you're dying, you feel like you're dying inside, right? You're not, like something is wrong with your body. What do you do? Do you sit down and you say, Lord, I eat this thing, I'm just going to go with it. No. You find the help. And you might all try a different doctor too. You say, I'm going to a natural doctor, I'm good. But you, you try. You try different therapies. You try different Find therapies. therapies that works for you. Yes. Yeah. Give yourself a chance. Yeah. Truly. And also surround yourself with the right people. Yeah. yeah? You know when somebody not good for you. You know. But that self-betrayal will get in the way. Yeah. But Give yourself a chance. Yeah. No, look in my eyes like that. Why? Because you know I see you? Yeah. You know I see you? Yeah. And likewise. Yes. I appreciate you. Thank I you so much you. for sharing. Thank you. You're nice, buddy, you know? <laughs> Stop that. You never expect me to put it that down? No. I try not get too much. <laughs> yeah, I'm I get like, emotional. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> the stare off, the stare off, the stare off. It's no. the emotions for me. Yeah, no. Thank you. I adore you. and you, But you know that. I don't even have to tell you. I adore you. Thank you. Thank you.